and I am back again. So, so basically, uh, you know, if you played any sort of white wolf system before, then you really know how it works. You've got attributes, you've got skills, um, you know, and basically you derive a dice pool. So if you're trying to hit somebody with a punch, you're going to be rolling dexterity plus your melee, and you know, bam. Um, now. Uh, Solar uh, Exalted does some things differently. For a start, it doesn't have merits and flaws, which is what a lot of the other White Wolf stuff actually does tend to have. Perhaps not so much the newer White Wolf stuff to the same extent the old stuff did, but instead, basically, uh, all Solars have what's known as an Essence Pool. Now, the Essence Pool is basically like a pool of power points from which they can draw their power obviously. Um, and they also have sort of these things called charms. Now charms are interesting in that they're like, um, well for instance, uh, the most basic level charm, uh, the first excellency. So in other words, I'm going to take the first melee excellency, I can basically add dice to my dice roll, because I am a solar, I am perfect, I can do things perfectly. Uh, that's basically what that's all about, you know. And you get other charms like uh, there's an ar there's a there's a tr archery charm uh, called uh, Trance of Unhesitating Speed. Some of these have got great names, uh, which basically says, um, you know, I, I can fire multiple arrows off my bow in one shot. You know, I mean, it's like they're they're little magical upgrades that really set you apart from. Uh, you know, from, from from humanity. I mean, there are some that can basically turn you into Superman. <laughs> you know, full stop. Uh, <laughs> I think it's called Iron Skin Concentration. You know, you flip it on. I'm made of iron. You cannot hurt me. And etc. etc. It's a very nice. You know, it's, it's, it's some really good uh, powered. You know, nicely powered stuff in there. Um, but befitting the cho you know chosen of the god, really. Um, however, when it comes to the system, uh, like I say, I mean that that's neither here nor there. That's when you're building characters. Um, They've got some fantastic systems that encourage role play. Um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, the Solar Curse. Basically, if they can be led to emotions of, of, of uh, sorry, excess of emotions, um, and very easily, it's called limit breaking. Not a good thing. Uh, which it all depends on their virtues. You see, everybody gets four virtues, which in this one are valor, conviction, compassion, and temperance. And basically, you, you can have a virtue floor, as it's called, associated with any of these four virtues. And if, if you if you fail, you know, if you go against actions, so for instance, if you're a compassionate person, and you know, there's a slave, you know, being beaten up and tortured, and you think this is absolutely wrong, and but it's too dangerous to do something about it. Well, you're going to go slightly, uh, you know, it's, it's 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 one of these situations that will build up your limit. And finally, when your limit breaks, then you know you you you're you're in a bit of trouble because you're being you're being ruled by your emotions at that point completely. So that's an interesting uh, system for role play. Um, but and this is another reason I like it. Basically, this is to all intents and purposes, it's a John Woo flick on paper. I mean, <laughs> to be quite honest with you, you know, when it comes to the combat, it's high action. Kung Fu sort of, uh, you know, epic battling. This isn't sort of just, I roll the dice and I hit you. And to um, to enforce this system, they haven't, they, this is where they brought in an absolute, I think, something that's absolutely brilliant. A system called the Stunt System. And I think this is absolutely terrific, because basically, um, you know, you can use this for anything, any skill roll that you can try and stunt it. But I'm, I'm going to use a combat example anyway. Um... Stunts are they encourage players to really describe their uh, describe the world around them to describe their actions to, and to make everybody else around the table sit up and go hey nice moves <laughs> sort of thing and uh, so so essentially you know um i could say i swing my sword at him you know, or whatever. Um, you know, so that, that that's really neither here nor there. You're basically just saying, I'm going to hit you. Uh, but maybe, you know, I don't know, some some example. Um, in a flurry of solar glory, I leap up in the air and bring my sword down in a mighty cross slash across his chest. Simply because you sort of described the action and how it's actually taking place, that would earn you an additional die to roll in your dice pool. It would also allow you to gain back a little bit of essence points as well. Because you know you, you're 
suddenly truer to your convictions and you know you're giving him hell. Uh, now, a two die stunt, for instance, you know, um, the game also encourages the players to sort of fill in the details of the world a bit. Um, you know, so for instance, um, Harmonious Jade is standing on a battlement, um, and you know, so she, so she's standing there, and suddenly two soldiers, their halberds sort of, uh, the halberds cocked and ready, they charge at her. In an, acro in an acrobatic somersault, she leaps off the battlement, draws her dagger, and jams it into the tapestry, you know, slowing her descent as she uh, falls to the ground beneath. Now, the GM might not necessarily have said the tapestry was actually there, but just the fact that she's actually, you know, she, she's actually sort of manipulating the world a bit and using it to her advantage, it just makes the whole thing flow. And that's the idea of the whole game, it's flow. So in other words, that's easily a two-die a two stunt. And, you know, that's fine. And the maximum you can get up to is three dice stunts, but basically, I'm not going to give a description. Three dice stunts are spur-of-the-moment things that make everybody sit up at the table and basically go, Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. And at that point, three dice stunt. <laughs> so, now, a lot of people might say, well, this isn't really role-playing, because all you're really doing is describing attacks and things, but I would disagree completely. You are helping to flesh out the world. You're helping to flesh out actions in the world. Um, and another thing, you know, science sort of builds on this and says, well, normally, yeah, you know, that statue right there, you know, normally you'd have to make a roll against its stuffness to see if it breaks, but when you get into the midst of an epic combat, and this is the type of stuff that's happening, if that statue holds no relevance to, you know, the, the GM story arc, you know, you can easily say, you know, Mighty Flurry, I slice through the statue's head and in turn slice through blah. Or, you know, uh, even if you're strong enough, I pick up the statue and I smack, you know, and sort of, you know, hurl, use it like a baton and smash the guy into the wall with it. Absolutely spot on what this whole thing's about. It's about being epic. Uh, you know, so... It, it just For me, it just has this really nice feel, this really nice flow. Also, it also uses... Um, uh, a nice tick system as well. I know other games have done this previously, but this is the first one I encountered, which basically means that, uh, say, you know, uh, oh, everybody rolls, to engage in start combat, everybody rolls wits plus awareness. The guy who rolls the highest starts on tick zero, and, you know, then the next person might start on tick two and tick three, blah. Now, you see, basically, different actions have got a different speed associated with them. So this is not like an initiative pass system. So, you know, it's like, like in d and I roll my d20, I get 18, he gets 19, I act after he does every round. So I, I'm using a grand diclave to sort of, you know, mince up my opponents. Well, that could have a speed of like five or six, where using a more, uh, using weapon like a dagger might only have a speed of three. So this means that the dagger is going to be able to act twice, in the time it takes for my big, beefy, beefy warrior to actually just swing his weapon once, you see. And it's a really nice system for just getting timings down and really working out, you know, how it all works. I personally favour the whole idea of a battle wheel, which is a, a wheel with seven segments that goes from uh, tick... Uh, is it seven segments? Something like that. It could be eight segments, actually. No, seven segments for Exalted. Um, basically, it starts in tick zero, goes all the way around to tick six, because no action takes longer than six ticks, you see. And uh, basically, you can just see on the wheel who's coming next, how long you can de delay your action for, how long you got to... It makes it really nice and tactical, and I really like the uh, whole initiative system. It really works. Um, and the Exalted Combat, as you might also expect, um, you know, when you first see the system, it might come across as being very complex and very complicated, and a lot of people have said as much. However, when you, as always, it's quite a crunchy system. It's quite rules intensive and heavy. Some of them don't work. Some of them need a bit of doctoring. Some of them are a bit vague. Um, when it comes to the combat system, yes, it does look complex. But I think you'll find that when you get into it, it's not so much complex as just very, very meaty what you can actually do with it. Uh, made more so by the different stunts and actions you can take. So, I, I, sorry, I, I'm going to have to stop this because I'm, I'm gushing, gushing about the whole, uh, about the whole setting and the whole thing. Um, but uh, basically, you know, if you like high-powered games, if you like, if you like settings with sort of demigods, even heroes, uh, if you like the idea of a free-form game um, where you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want. Uh, you know, sort of bring down the dynasty, have these huge epic goals in mind, and the you know the power level to actually back it up. Uh, if you like, um, if you like games where 
you can add structure if you need it or you can throw structure aside on a whim I think you'll really like Exalted if you take the time to actually get into it. Unfortunately, yeah, there are a lot of books involved. And, you know, I, I would say that you need the um, Exalted Core book, you need the White Treaties, and you need the Scroll of the Monk. You need those three, I would say, if you really want to run a game. If you want information on everything else, my one huge criticism is the way they've done the antagonists, are they're spread over every single book you can think of there. And actually finding what you want is a hassle and a half. Um, I'm not happy with them with that. The, the White Wolf need to start making books of, you know, like, you know, monster manuals, and they have started to some extent with some games now, but they, uh, Exalted being a fancy setting as it is, it needed that. And, you know, so far we still haven't got it. Hopefully, I've heard rumours it's in the pipeline. Anyway, uh, this is Chrome Magnus. I'm going to sign off before I run out of time. I'll catch you guys later. Cheers, YouTube. Thanks.